I want to welcome every one of us to the presence of the Lord today. For joining us, you are watching us online. If you are fellowshipping with us in person today, I want to welcome everyone into the house of God. Welcome to Bethel Experience. And remember, wherever you are gathered, wherever you are, is the house of God, is Bethel. And the presence of the Lord is with you. I said the presence of the Lord is with you. And so as we continue in the journey of 2021 together, remember the presence of the Lord is where? It's with you, wherever you find yourself, wherever you are gathered. And in this year of excellence, I pray for someone that the excellence that everyone has prepared and ordained for you, you will not miss it. I said you will not miss it in the name of Jesus. In this second month, it's also the second month for us, the month of the second touch. And today happens to be the last day of the month and the last Sunday. And I pray for someone that you will not miss that visitation that will turn your life around in the name of Jesus. We're going to be talking about what I tied to this morning, you are God's investment. Amen. I want you to point to yourself boldly, confidently, assuredly that I am God's investment. I am God's investment. Are you sure about that? Yes. I want you to say it confidently again. I am God's investment. I am God's investment. Talking about the second touch. We've looked at different focus about the touch of God. But one thing I want to bring out today, and I've emphasized that before, that when God touches a man, God is very particular, is very meticulous. What that means is God is investing in each and every one of us. And so I want you to look at yourself from that perspective and stop looking at yourself from who you used to be, what you used to do, the life you used to live. If any man is in Christ, is who? A new creature. All those old things are what? And all things have become new. And so I want you to begin to see yourself in the light from the perspective that everyone sees you. Praise the Lord. Let's read the scripture. Amen. Let's read the book of Psalm 89. I'm going to read three verses there. Psalm 89 from verse 19. Psalm 89 from verse 19 to 21. Talking about David. He said, Then thou speak in vision to thy holy one. Let's have it in our amplified. Amplified version. He said, Once you spoke in a vision to who? to your godly one, and said, I have given help to one who is mighty, giving him power to be who? A champion for Israel. I have exalted one chosen from the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil, I have what? Anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established and steadfast. My arm also shall strengthen him. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. I have found David. And the Lord is saying he has found a vessel in you. Hello? I have found David, my holy one. I have anointed him. How many of us have been anointed by the Lord? Amen. You see, some of us were still second-guessing ourselves. 
I said in this month of the second touch, the touch of God is already upon you. God has anointed you for a purpose. He has anointed you for an assignment. He has anointed you for a task. Talking about the year of excellence. Remember, God is not asking you to search for anything less than the best. And so you need to see yourself from that perspective that you are the chosen one. And because you have been chosen by the Lord, his anointing is already upon you. And God wants to accomplish greater things in the land, in your home, in the society. Through who? Through you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's look at that scripture again, verse 20. The Lord said, I have found David my servant. Now, talking about God's investment. When David was anointed as king in the midst of who? His brothers. You remember Psalm 23. He said, Thou anoint my head with oil. But before that, he said, you set a table before me. In whose presence? Hello? But then he was anointed in the presence of his brethren, right? What that means is that when God wants to use you, the oil that will come upon you is an investment. Everyone talking about David, every of his brothers. When David was in the backside of the field, fighting bears and lions, what were they doing? God was preparing him. And when it was time for God to showcase him, it was easy for God to bring him out and say, Every of this one that I've auditioned, I have not chosen them. God was investing in the life of David, even though no one sees him at that time. I'm here to tell someone, the investment of God over your life this year will showcase you. Amen. I said it will showcase you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. When David was now anointed, God says, I have found David. The question is this. Have you been discovered by heaven? I know some of us have a little bit knowledge about investment, if I can use that term. Everything that is important to you, you count it as what? As an investment, correct? And when you have an investment, what do you do? You take care of it. Praise the Lord. And so I'm here to tell someone, stop looking at yourself as though you don't matter in life. Stop putting yourself down. Stop degrading and denigrating yourself. You are the apple of God's eyes. Stop allowing what others are saying about you to determine how you see yourself. You are who? You are an apple of God's eyes. He has invested in your life. Praise the Lord. But then, let me also ask us this. When you look at an investment, when you invest in something, what do you expect to get in return? A return on investment. A return on investment. 
I'm going to give us, talking about David, I'll give us another example of a man. And we are going to contrast them. Now, when David started, we know how, how David started. A shepherd boy. Was left alone in the field. Even when it was time to appoint a king, that Samuel called Jesse, bring out all your son. Praise God. Where was David? He was not invited. Praise God. It, it doesn't matter how men sees you, whether they think that you don't have it in you. But I don't want you to see yourself as not having it in you. Do you know why? Because he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Praise the Lord. You are God's investment. I said you are God's investment. When we look at the life of the man of God called Moses, Moses was a man that talked to God out face to face. God invested in his life. But remember, before that investment, Moses knew that he was born to be a leader. And he tried to take matters on his own hand. But was not prepared then. And God had to send him to the backside of the desert to go and prepare him there. Now, talking about preparation, and I've said this before, without preparation, manifestation will not be optima. Let me repeat that again. Without preparation, manifestation will not be what? Will not be optima. When Moses tried to manifest, he saw an Egyptian and an Israelite. And he looked right and left and said, well, no one is seeing me. Let me assume this responsibility, this role. He killed the Egyptian. But it was not his time. He was not prepared. God had to send him to the backside of the desert to invest in him, to prepare him. But the big question, church, that I ask for us as we round up the month of the second touch, in the journey of 2021, there are glorious and precious promises ahead of us. How are you treating God's investment? Praise the Lord. How are you what? Treating God's investment. Moses, Exodus chapter 4, verse 2. Moses, a man that God gave the word, I am going to do what? I am going to use you to deliver Israel. And you are the one that will take them from Egypt to where? to the promised land. Now, let's look at it this way. God has a calling for your life, and he's taking you somewhere. But it's a process. And so, God began to use Moses. And he got to a point, in Exodus 4, two, the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? And he said, what? A rod. Amen. Amen. Verse 3. For a lot of us that may not be familiar with the story of Moses, this same rod was not something that God gave Moses. Hello? It was the same rod that Moses had with him before God called him. Praise the Lord. He cast that rod and it became a serpent. Long story short, that rod became the rod of who? The rod of God. It was a symbol of God's authority and power in the life of Moses. It was the same rod, right? 
that he stretched towards the Red Sea, and the seed did what? Amen. It was the same rock that he stretched towards the Red Sea River. Now, now, it became what? Blood. It was the same rock that God used to perform diverse miracle signs and wonders. Flies, frogs, lice in the land of Egypt. God's investment. Praise the Lord. But do you know that it was also the same rod that Moses stretched towards the rock when God asked him, give my people water. Speak to the rock. But he did what? He stretched the rod to the rock and said, ye rebel, shall we do what? Give you water, bring you water out of this rock. God's investment. The focus today is that I want you to take responsibility for God's investment in your life. If you have a land and you are not tending it, you are not taking care of it, what is going to happen? It will, be, it will become overgrown with weeds. You are God's investment. And so I want you to look inward and take responsibility for God's calling upon your life. We are in a year like no other that God wants to use his own children. He wants to elevate you. He wants to showcase you. He wants to cause you to be the envy of the world. But for us to be able to get to that point, we need to understand what is called responsibility. I don't want you to allow God's investment in your life to become a burden. Are we together, church? Don't allow God's investment, God's calling upon your life to become a burden. Moses knows the mind he knows the will and the plan of God. And that was why God was disappointed in him. And this is a man that God talked to face to face. And God said, because you did not honor me, that promised land, I will take you to Mount Pisgah and you will see it. But you are not going to get there. What am I talking about this morning, beloved? Each and every one of us, there is a treasure in us. There is a gift that God has deposited into your life. I'm here to tell you this morning, you must take responsibility. Praise the Lord. You must do what? Take responsibility. You see, in the case of Moses here, every time I look at his own case, it's, it's a story that as much as I know that he's in a good place, he still did not get to the promised land. And do you know how this man labor and toil for the people of God? And yet, he did not get to the promised land. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. Faithfulness is the key word here. And that's what I want to challenge us with. Every investment of God in your life, every of his gift upon your life, you must be faithful to it. It is required, amplified, it is required in stewards that a man be found what? Faithful. Amplify said in this case, moreover, it is required as what? What's an essential? When they say something is essential, what does it mean? 
cannot do without. I, I am not a linguistic, but I know when they say something is essential, that means it's really, really important. In this case, moreover, it is required as essential and demanded of stewards. Each and every one of us, we are stewards of God's investment. And so you must be found faithful and trustworthy. Praise the Lord. It's investment. And I've said this before also. When there is a gift that God deposited into the life of a man, that gift is for you to do what? To be a blessing to who? To others. The investment of God in your life is for you to be a blessing to others. A blessing to the body of Christ. A blessing to your own family, to your own household. And then on the flip side, I will talk about the man in John chapter 12 from verse 5 called Judas. And every time I think about him, do you know, you, you remember when Jesus sent the disciples out, amen, to go and preach the gospel? In truth, right? Praise God. He said, uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, from verse 1. Jesus sent them out. Praise God. To go and preach. He said, in every place that you get to, just go and preach the gospel. This man who walked with Jesus, lived with Jesus, they went on crusade, missionary journey, all over. Praise the Lord. But the investment of God in his life, he did not profit with it. Because at the end, he traded that investment for 30 shekels of silver. Now, did you see why in that uh, 1 Corinthians 4 is important? If a man is not found faithful, the investment of God will become a burden rather than a blessing. You are God's investment. Now I'm speaking from the heart this morning, brethren, as we continue in the journey of 2021. I don't want you to see yourself from the lens that other people see you. Begin to see yourself as valuable. You are a treasure. You are important to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Judas, if you go to verse 5 of John chapter 12, John chapter 12 from verse 5. All the while that he was with Jesus, it was obvious that the investment of God upon his life, he was taking advantage of that for his own what? For his own purpose, for his own benefit. We remember the story here. The woman with an alabaster box anointed Jesus. And he said, why was this ointment not sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? You think he cared for the poor? Because he was the one that kept the purse. Look at, it's not my word. Look at verse 6. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. Hello? Now, we're, we're not talking of somebody who was not with Jesus. One of the 12 disciples. And so, if one of the 12 disciples can still miss the mark. Beloved, that's the reason why this morning I want to passionately plead with us 
that begin to see yourself as God's investment and don't allow the gift, the investment of God in your life to ever become a burden. You are meant to be a blessing and not a burden. And so you need to take responsibility for every of God's investments in your life. You need to do what? You need to take responsibility. When Judas betrayed Jesus, and at the end they realized, yes, he took the money back, and they didn't collect it for him. I always tell that there was someone who was asking me, but why? Must it be Judas that betrayed Jesus? That it was written. I said, yes, it was written that someone would betray Jesus. But it was not written that it must be Judas. Hello? Do you know it could have been what? Any of the apostles. But it is what is in the life of a man that will manifest. Out of the abundance of the heart, the man will speak. When Judas did not allow the investment of God in his life to work properly, he was working for his own gain. It could have been any of the apostles. And that's why each and every one of us need to examine ourselves. It is required, it is a must, it is essential, it is compulsory that everyone with God's investment be found what? Faithful. Because when you, when you look inward and you are honest with yourself that I cannot afford to fail God, I cannot afford to disappoint him. Why? Because the endless expectation of creator, they are waiting your manifestation. And so the investment of God, everyone is expecting you to profit with it. We remember the talent, right? Some were given two. Some were given five. Someone has one. The one with one began to complain. What do you think is the issue here? Faithfulness. If you are not faithful with the responsibility that God has given you, no matter how little that responsibility is, do you know that some people are being asked to come and do something? And they said, no. I cannot do this. This is too low for me. I want a higher responsibility. It doesn't work that way. But God wants to prepare you first. So that when it is time for manifestation, you will be able to understand that when you are using your gift and your talent, it is not to show off that, yes, I have arrived. You are God's investment. You are God's treasure. You are his apple, the apple of his eyes. And so begin to look at yourself from that perspective. And the story of Judas, the 12 disciples, the 12 apostles, they have a special place in the heart of Christ. You remember in Revelation, it talks about the fact that these ones I am going to write their name. And Judas lost that position. His bisophoric was given to another. Can you imagine having walked with Jesus, served with Jesus, and allowed that responsibility to become a burden? Brethren, this morning, as we look forward to the month of March, it's a new day. It's a new dawn. It's a new beginning. The month of March is the month of overflow. I said it's the month of overflow. 
And so if you go back to that Psalm 23, verse 5, David says, you anoint my head with oil. My cup does what? That is the gift of God in your life. And so that gift must begin to manifest. That gift must begin to do what? To manifest. There is an investment of heaven over your life. I want you to take responsibility for it. Because God wants to use you. He wants to use me. To be able to bring light back to this dark world. To be able to bring order back to the chaos. In the beginning, God saw darkness. And he said, let there be light. And what happened? Light follows immediately. Brethren, the challenge of heaven for us today and this morning is only that there is an investment of God in our life, upon our life. Don't disappoint heaven. The lockdown is lifted. As you go out there, be God's mouthpiece. Be an investment that will showcase Christ to the world. Don't let the gift of God in your life become a burden. I know we talk about it during the Sunday school. You see, when people know that you are a child of God, and they know you are not going to lie, it's not a question of them coming to you to say, Brother A or Sister B, this is what we want to do. And we want you to agree with us. They will not even come to you because they know what? Your value. But when they know that with you, everything goes. Brethren, I am here to let somebody know that the expectation of heaven is great. And especially in a time like this, where the world is in need of direction. The world is in need of a leader who will stand up and be able to speak the truth based on the word of the Lord. And the Lord is saying he's sending each and every one of us out as his mouthpiece. He has invested in you and God wants you to go and do what? And be a light. I have found David, my servant. Would that be said of you and I, that everyone has found you? That's the word of the Lord for us today. God is saying, I want to use you as a tool. And he has invested in you. In comparing the life of Moses, amen, to that of Judas, Moses did not get to the promised land, but it did not what? It did not end without what? The presence of God. But Judas had the opportunity and he missed it. Rather than repenting, he was only remorseful. Returned the money, never went back to Christ, never went back to God, and he hanged himself. And I always ponder, what happened to God's investment in this life? Somebody who walked with Jesus. How much more you and I? Don't let God's investment in your life ever become a burden. It's a blessing. You must use it to bless others. And that's why we need to continue to reflect. We need to continue to understand that faithfulness is required in stewards. We're going to take a word of prayer. Let's rise up. Let's rise up.
You see, everyone's level may be different. You see, the level of relationship that God has with Moses, amen, is totally different. In Numbers chapter 20, Numbers chapter 20, if you look at verse 12, Numbers chapter 20, verse 12, God had a higher level of responsibility for Moses. And so it was easy for God to now tell him, he said, because you believe me not and you did not sanctify me in the presence of the children of Israel, therefore you will not bring the congregation into the land which I have given to them. But you know that that was the original plan of God, that Moses would lead them to the promised land. Expectation of heaven. I want you to pray for yourself. Today is a day of reflection. What is everyone's expectation for your life? I want you to examine yourself. Have you measured up to that standard? Or you have taken with levity the gifts and the blessings of God in your life? There are some of us that we are now used to God. Whatever responsibility you have been assigned, we take it for granted. And you can just show up. Please, I want you to pray for yourself. Ask for that grace. Never to fall, never to fumble, never to falter or to fail in your assignment. The endless expectation of creator awaits your manifestation, my manifestation. There is an investment of God upon your life. You cannot but remain faithful to the calling of God, to his assignment for you. I don't want you to miss out in this year of excellence. Everyone has prepared a glorious destiny for you. I don't want you to miss out. I want you to examine yourself. The psalmist says, search me, O God, and try me. No wonder David was referred to as the apple of God's eyes. Because he was quick to always go back to God anytime he messed up. He says, cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Will heaven find you faithful? in your assignments, in your calling. Will heaven find you faithful? You are God's investment. Don't waste this investment this year. The harvest truly is plenteous. But laborers are few. Thank you, Father Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. Father, you have sent your word to us this morning. And I pray, Lord, that you will come and help us. Each and every one of us, we have a duty. We have an obligation. We have a responsibility under God. Lord, to profit with your grace and investment upon our life. I'm asking for that sustaining grace, that divine enablement to continue in our daily walk with you. Grant unto us in the name of Jesus. That every of your investment, every of your gift in our life, help us, Lord, not to look at it as a burden, but as a blessing. In the name of Jesus. And as we go in the journey of the month of March, as we step into this new month, Lord, I'm asking, O oh God, just like David said, Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup run over. For each and every of your children, as we go in the journey of the month of March, Lord, let there be an overflow of your grace, an overflow 
of your mercy, an overflow of your power, an overflow of your favor, an overflow of healing, an overflow of the divine sustainer, of your divine protection. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. And amen.